plan my Mills 50th birthday party, but while at the event, she gave a speech humiliating me about my past to shame me. Now I've cut her off and the whole family is blaming me. Hi, so I, 27F, got married to my husband Jonah, 28M, three months ago. We'd been in a relationship for four years before we got married. He got along pretty well with my family but I can't say the same for myself. His family's women have a thing where they mostly quit their jobs a few months after getting married and believe in a more traditional lifestyle. Now of course there's nothing wrong with that, as long as it's their personal choice. And it has been because as far as I know, the men of Jonah's family haven't pressured the women into quitting their jobs, it's been out of their own free will. I personally don't believe in that kind of lifestyle and I made it very clear to Jonah that I wanted to continue working after marriage, it was non-negotiable. He didn't have a problem with that and told me that he actually expected me to continue working and made a joke about how two incomes were always better than one, so he preferred it this way. So Jonah is pretty supportive of my decision and that's the way it should be. My mother-in-law Kelly, is unfortunately not on board with that, never has been and it reflects in her behavior. To be honest, most of the women in his family, including his sister Jessica, and all of his aunts and other female relatives have always been very cold towards me and have never made an effort to include me or be nice to me. I never understood why because I never judged them for their decision to quit their jobs, even though in my opinion that wasn't something I agreed with, but I'd always try to be nice to them yet they never behaved the same way with me. I was always willing to put our differences aside and be nice to them but they weren't. They made it very clear to me right from the first meeting that they didn't like me and never would until I joined their club of stay-at-home wives and moms, which was never going to happen. Jonah told me to ignore it and said that the only thing that mattered was if the two of us were okay with our arrangement and as long as we were okay with it, it didn't matter what other people thought of us. So I tried to deal with it like he told me to and ignored his family's cold behavior towards me for as long as we were in a relationship. Every time I'd attend any family event of his, the women of the family would try to talk me into quitting my job but they never succeeded and that's probably how they started resenting me. When I got engaged, none of the women in his family seemed to be happy at our engagement party. And they had the same sour faces even at our wedding but I didn't care because like Jonah had said, as long as we were okay, it didn't matter what they thought. I was used to them being all cold and distant towards me and it just increased after our marriage but I tried my best not to care about it. However, about two weeks ago, my mother-in-law surprised me by asking me to organize her 50th birthday. Kelly usually doesn't talk to me at all unless it's absolutely required of her, so I was quite surprised when she called me and told me that she wanted me to do it for her. I'm an event organizer by profession and have my own firm, so I took that as a sign of her finally accepting me and it brought me a lot of joy when she asked me to take over the planning. I was actually overjoyed and decided that I was going to do it all on my own and wouldn't take even a dollar from her, it would all come out of my own pocket because that's how happy I was. I booked one of our best venues and oversaw everything personally because I wanted everything to be perfect. She was also pretty helpful and nice throughout and that was a welcome change of pace from her usual behavior. And then, finally, yesterday on the day of her birthday, she thanked me for all my hard work by making a humiliating speech against me to try and paint me in a bad light. Once all the guests had arrived and she'd cut her cake, everybody encouraged her to make a speech on her 50th birthday and so did I, not knowing that it would backfire so badly. It started off nicely enough, she thanked everybody for coming and then she thanked me for planning and organizing everything so beautifully. But then it went in a different direction, where she started talking about my career as an event planner. She started talking about how I'd started at a different firm, as the one in charge of decorations. And it was true, I did indeed start at another firm and I was actually in charge of decor and stuff. But I hadn't told her about this because she never bothered to ask me anything about my work, so I didn't know where she was getting that information from and I had a bad feeling that this was not going to end well. And she proved me right by bringing up how I was fired for indecent conduct with my boss after a couple of months, which wasn't even the full story. She told everyone that my boss had to fire me because I'd apparently tried to wiggle my way into a promotion by flirting with an already married man and my boss didn't appreciate that, so he had to let me go. Jonah knew about this incident because it was one of the worst things that had ever happened to me and I was wrongfully terminated by my previous employer on false charges. That's not something you move on from easily. The real story was that my boss had tried to make a move on me a couple of times but had been rejected every single time. One day, he called me into his office for a meeting and told me that he was ready to offer me a promotion and a significant raise if I agreed to get into a relationship with him but I rejected him then and there and threatened to complain about him. So he twisted the story according to his convenience and had me fired. I did file a lawsuit against him but he offered me a large amount of hush money, as long as I signed an NDA and never talked about that incident in a public space again and came to a settlement. Unfortunately, I took him up on that offer because at the time, I was really struggling and I didn't come from a very financially well-off family so money was everything to me. And I couldn't afford to lose out on the kind of money that he was offering me. So he got to tell his side of the story according to his convenience. And everybody that worked with him believed that I was the one who tried to make a move on him for a raise, it backfired and I was let go for trying to hit on my boss. Only a couple of my close friends and my family know the real truth. 
And it was downright humiliating for me to hear Kelly talk about such a well-guarded secret in front of so many people, practically Jonah's entire family and also a couple of his friends and Kelly's friends. She made a mockery out of the worst thing that had ever happened to me, something that I'm still struggling to forget. So I stormed out of the venue with tears in my eyes, without even waiting for her to end her speech. I didn't even wait for Jonah to follow me, I was really upset and I was already halfway home in my car when Jonah called me and told me to come back to the party. I said no at first but he insisted that I needed to come back, so I headed back to the party. Once I got there, I saw that the place was practically empty apart from a couple of our common friends and a few relatives who had always been nice to me. Kelly wasn't there anymore and neither were any of his other family members which was surprising because it was supposed to be Kelly's birthday party. He told me that he'd kick them all out and would get into the details of it later. But for now, he just wanted me to enjoy it because I'd worked hard to make this party a huge success and he wanted me to enjoy the result of my own hard work and I'd also spent a lot of money on this, so I deserved it. I tried to talk to him about what had happened but he told me to forget about it and just enjoy the evening and we could discuss that later. So he and I and the other people who'd stayed went on with the evening, and we actually had a nice time. We talked, we laughed and then we had a lot of champagne and a heck lot of delicious food which was supposed to be for my mother-in-law and her guests but she screwed it up for herself. So Jonah did save the evening, not for Kelly but for me. Then finally, when we got home I asked Jonah what had happened after I left. He told me that Kelly ended the speech exactly like he'd expected her to with a dig at me about how I was immoral and unethical just because I'm a working woman and that I have no moral values, I don't care about my family and stuff like that. And she even warned Jonah to make me quit my job or else there'd be more such incidents for him to look out for. She also insinuated that I'd probably tried to do this more than once, but that was the only time I was caught. And apparently, that's how I have a firm of my own now, completely disregarding all my hard work over the past couple of years. It was a disgusting thing to say about me, as a woman herself. And Jonah felt the same way about it, so he told his mother that she needed to get the hell out of there and when a couple of other people protested against it, he told them that this party had been paid for and organized all by me, so if they didn't like me then they were free to leave. There was a lot of chaos and Kelly refused to back down without a fight, so she kept trying to argue with him but Jonah shut it down and had her kicked out of the party by security, who knew that he was my husband so they did what he asked them to. Once she was removed from the premises, most of the other guests pretty much followed suit either out of awkwardness or as a form of protest because they wanted Jonah to know that they believed Kelly was right and I was the worst. The only people who stayed were a couple of our friends and a few other relatives who we spent the rest of the evening with. It was quite disappointing that, out of a guest list that comprised almost 40 people, only 8 people bothered to stay back. But I was really proud of my husband for standing up to his mother for my sake. He apologized to me for not doing it sooner because he'd always felt that she'd eventually come around. That speech convinced him that she was too set in her ways to think of anybody's happiness except her own. He told me that he was really sorry that it had taken him so long to shut down his mother's BS, but it was fine by me. She'd never been so outright horrible to me and had always kept it subtle, so it didn't seem worth it to ruin relationships over something like that and even I believed that she'd come to accept me at some point. But now we all knew that she wasn't even capable of it. However, that's not the reason that I'm here. It's actually what happened after that incident and the phone call this morning that's brought me here, so I can have an objective set of opinions on this. I still don't know how Kelly was able to find out about that incident because nobody knows, apart from my close and trusted people. And I'm sure they'd never tell her this because they know that she'd have a field day talking about it and treating it like gossip. I am guessing someone from my workplace blabbed and she found out through her other gossip monger friends. But that's not the point, this morning she called me to tell me that she was really sorry about her speech the previous night. She told me that she didn't know the real story, which is why she brought it up to use against me. I was really angry so I told her that it didn't matter why she did it, what mattered was that it was done now and she couldn't take any of it back. She'd obviously also been planning for this for quite a while and I couldn't believe that she'd stoop to such a low level, just so she could humiliate me, even after I organized such a beautiful party for her. I was extremely upset and I just let it all out on the phone. I told her that I never wanted to hear from her ever again because what she'd done was absolutely unforgivable. She tried to talk to me calmly and said that the only reason that she'd made that speech was because she wasn't aware of the real story up until last evening and after she found out, she felt sorry. But honestly, the story wasn't even the problem for me. Even if it had been true, she had no right to talk about it in front of that many people and try to humiliate me. To me, what hurt was that her intention had been to make me look bad all along and I couldn't stand that or forgive that. I told her that I wasn't interested in her apology because it was too late now and she'd already shown me her true colors. She tried to say something but then I hung up before she could finish her sentence. So then she texted me and said that she really was sorry about what happened and she wanted me to forgive her because she felt terrible about it. I texted back and said that she should feel terrible about it for quite some time until I started feeling better. After that message, she told me that I was taking this too far and that there really wasn't anything else that she could do, apart from just apologize. I didn't reply to her after that. Then a couple of hours back, Jonah came home and I discussed this with him. He told me that I could choose to forgive his mother whenever I was okay with it and that there was no pressure on me. 
I could even choose not to forgive her and that would still be okay. But I don't think any of his other relatives feel the same way. Because his father also texted me and so did his sister, to tell me that I really needed to accept Kelly's apology because she's been miserable the entire day. They told me that she felt horrible about what she did and that only if I forgave her would she start feeling better about things. Jonah doesn't think that I need to do it, just to please her and the family but there's nothing that they can do apart from apologize. And honestly, Kelly sounded pretty genuine on the phone. I know the right thing to do would be to just forgive her and try to move on from this episode, instead of holding on to it and being dramatic. But I honestly do want to hold on to it because they made me feel awful about myself and used the worst thing that had ever happened to me against me without even knowing the truth. I think that's pretty much as low as they can go and just one apology doesn't even cut it. And I'm afraid that I sound like a total drama queen right now but that's how I really feel. I don't want to ruin the peace of his family just because of this and I want to know if I'm overreacting or if it's completely normal for me to feel this way. So Ida for not wanting to forgive my mother-in-law for a humiliating speech that she made against me? Update 1, hey, so it's been a few days now. I still haven't made up my mind about what to do about the whole situation with Kelly but she's been apologizing to me and sending me messages almost every day to let me know that she is sorry and she means her apology. I feel bad for ignoring all of it but I do know one thing, that I don't need to forgive her just because she's sorry. At least that's one thing that I've taken away from this thread. I also managed to find out how Kelly got to know about that incident at my first workplace. So I did some digging on social media and I went through Kelly's account. In one of her recent photos, she was hanging out with a woman who looked really familiar and I found out that that was one of my ex-co-worker's mothers and in the background, I could see my ex-co-worker too. That co-worker of mine always had a picture of her family on her desk and I remembered that lady from the photo. I wasn't close with that person and I'm guessing that she believed my boss's version of the story which she then went on to tell other people. Kelly met my co-worker and her mother at her nephew's wedding a couple of weeks ago which explains why she found out about this recently, otherwise, she would have tried to use this against me way back. It was awful that the universe had brought these people together and they'd exchanged stories about me because it screwed up things for me. As for how she got to know the real version of the story, I just asked Jonah if he'd told her mom and he confessed that he had indeed told his mom about the reality. Because he wanted to make sure that I received an apology, at the very least, since he thought that this was kind of his fault for not intervening before. I never really thought of it that way because he'd never taken his family's side over mine and you can't exactly call out people from your family just because they're acting cold towards your wife, that's just childish. But he did stand up for me the one time that it really counted and that was on Kelly's birthday, so I think he did the right thing. I have no complaints against my husband. Update 2, now that it's been a week since the incident, I finally decided that I was going to accept Kelly's apology. But I wasn't going to speak to her again, I'm sticking to that. The only problem is that if I don't speak to her, Jonah doesn't speak to her and I don't think that she's going to take that well. I've told Jonah that I don't mind if he continues to keep in touch with his mother. But he's vehemently opposed to the idea and has told me that if I don't talk to her, then he's not going to talk to her either. Because we are a package deal, and that's a pretty sweet way of putting it. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to break the news to her because it's pretty weird to just say I do forgive you but I don't want to hear from you ever again, bye. I do have to explain certain things and I have a lot to say to her, not just about the incident that took place recently but also about everything that has happened over the past few years. I need her to know that she and the other women in their family cannot treat people so badly just because their beliefs don't align. It's going to sound preachy but I just need to tell her that, so that no other woman has to go through what I went through when I married into this family. Update 3, so, I texted her and got it all off my chest. I told her that I do forgive her but I'm not interested in having a relationship anymore. And I think it's for the best if we all stay apart for a while now. I tried to put it as politely and nicely as I could but I did tell her that the way she and the other women of her family treated me was extremely unfair and almost made them seem like a cult, which didn't allow working women or something. I told them that they couldn't treat people this way because it was disgusting. And while I'm glad that at least Kelly has come to her senses, it'd be great if she explained this to everybody else and made sure that they learned this very important lesson as well. I tried to be polite throughout the text but unfortunately, she didn't take that well either. Her replies were very defensive and she told me that if I'd just come clean and told everybody about that incident in the first place before marriage, then she never would have made a speech about it, as if this was my fault. She also said that she just wanted to apologize and she didn't need a sermon on ethics and morality for me now. Because she believed that I wasn't exactly the best person for that. I don't even know what that was supposed to mean but if Kelly said it then, I'm pretty sure it couldn't mean anything good. I felt like it was a dig at me once again, and that just made me feel better about the fact that Jonah was also cutting them off. Because that would teach them a lesson. By the time I was done reading her texts, I almost started regretting ever even responding to her. It just took one text from me saying that I wanted to go and see for her to go back and undo all the work and effort she'd been putting in for the past week or so into winning me back over. Show the way she reacted to my message and my decision to have boundaries with her and her family just negated everything she'd said in the past. It was disappointing but Jonah and I've learnt not to expect any better from his family either. 
The one good thing about this is that I can finally put it all out of my mind and pretend that none of this ever happened. Update 4. So it's been 3 weeks since my last update here and it's been pretty dull so I haven't posted here because there hasn't been much to say. After that last conversation, Kelly stopped texting me but she did try to talk to Jonah and when she realized that he was not going to speak to her, she cursed at him by text and then blocked him out of anger. A couple of days later, I was blocked too. Jonah's father has been trying to convince him to fix things between me and his mother because he doesn't want so much family drama to deal with but that's not going to happen and Kelly has made sure of it. So I'm not going to try either. The entire family is against me right now because they feel like I've taken Jonah away from her and are blaming me for breaking up the family as if Kelly had no role to play in this. A few of the relatives who are on our side have kept us updated about what everybody else is saying and it's crazy how they refuse to acknowledge their own fault. They only care about pinning all the blame on one person, which just so happens to be me. I'm pretty much used to it now, so I honestly don't mind it. And like I said in the beginning itself, as long as Jonah and I are happy with each other and are true to ourselves, it doesn't matter to us what everybody else thinks.